What are you doing, buddy? Oh, we didn't like that. I'm making an update video today, and it is based on the do's and don'ts of, you know, entering this PC world for the first time. It's been exciting to say the least. Um, <laughs> um, this is not a G skills hate video. I was gonna, I'm gonna throw it out there. I don't, I don't hate G skills. I just have some criticisms because of my bad luck. So sorry. Don't, don't eat. It's gonna be a quick little video I hope to put out um, sometime during the last week of April. So if this video is coming out in the end of April, then I, I, I stayed to a somewhat schedule um, of putting out about a video a week, and that's awesome. So if you, if you are enjoying the content, uh, you know what to do at this point, don't you? Yikes, big yikes on my custom PC build and configuration. A lot has happened since I have, you know, posted the last video. I'll talk about more about that later. Um, a little bit about my journey. I did buy each piece individually to build this computer. So, you know, down from uh, my graphics card, RAM, the case, to the motherboard, the fans, the, the coolings, you name it, I bought it. I bought all the pieces individually to make the perfect configuration, the perfect customized computer. The PC build itself is actually really good. Um, what happened was I, you know, I, I'm a boomer, I think. I think I finally, I'm old. I think I'm old now and I'm, I'm finally a boomer. Obviously, I didn't just build a computer with no knowledge base, no research done. No, I, I did tons of research ahead of time. I, I picked out all my parts meticulously. Um, even the people at Micro Center were, were saying, this is a great PC, great build, you know, and I don't, I don't know, they're maybe trying to sell me, but... So let me break down what was user error, what was not user error, and, and what happened. I hope this video can help a few people that are trying to maybe move away from Max into the world of PC, or maybe just someone that's interested in creating their first PC, um, maybe moving from a laptop, whatever your situation is. I hope this video helps. Since the first day I unwrapped the computer, put it on my desk, plugged the bad boy in, it was supposed to just turn on and everything was supposed to be perfect. And it was, it worked. The whole thing worked. Everything um, in the task manager was showing that it was working and it, it did. It ran everything I needed it to run flawlessly. The one thing I didn't notice is my VGA light was on the entire time. Now, if you don't know what a VGA light is, it's an indicator that something is wrong with either your graphics card, something visually is an issue. Even in the first video when I was breaking down my specs and showing you my configuration, the light was on in that video. So from out of the box, um, this VGA light was on and I didn't think it was anything. I thought it honestly meant the computer was on and this light is an indication that it's on. That was totally wrong. Let's start there, right? Why was my VGA light on? Well, I had taken my computer back to Micro Center to ask them, hey man, <laughs> I just spent a lot of money to have you guys help build this computer that you guys also helped me configure. So what's the deal? Why isn't it working? Um, first they said, well, have you checked out the power supply? <laughs> just straight up boomer. They just see where you're plugging your computer in at. So my first tip to any new PC owner is power supply management. It is a biggie and it is a must. So if possible, you should never have your computer, your actual PC being shared with an extension cord if you can help it. You have a power supply in your computer. Depending on what you have in peripherals, you might have a power supply powering your speakers. You might have a power supply supplying your lights. Um, depending on what your setup is, you might have a lot of things plugged into your extension extension cord cable. Um, spoiler alert, not a good idea. The power supply that you're plugging into the wall that has an extended amount of outlets actually has a finite amount of power that can run through it. So I have a 1000 watt power supply unit in my PC. But what could have been happening is my power supply was not getting the maximum amount of power it needed uh, to run fu like function correctly. So there could have been some errors with that. I had, <laughs> I had both of my monitors, dual monitor setup, dual light setup. Okay, I had my camera, dummy battery, all of this and my power supply unit running through the same extension. That's a big no-go, um, especially uh, as someone who's running a 1000 watt power supply unit. Hard no. Don't do that. Don't be a me. Don't do that. Make sure that your PC has a dedicated wall outlet, especially if you don't live in a super older building where, you know, blackouts are a thing that you need to worry about. Plug your PC into the wall, okay? Give it its dedicated, you know, source. And if you are worried about surges, you can still use an extension cable. Just make sure that, you know, you don't have a lot of things plugged into it. So now I have my PC plugged directly into my wall. I live in a newer building. I'm not too worried about it. And then all my peripherals 
are actually plugged directly into that extension outlet that I was mentioning earlier. And now that that's out of the way, boomer stuff, right? Did you even plug it in right? But ultimately, it wasn't the power supply management issue causing my VGA light to be on. It was even dumber, believe it or not. The second thing I would strongly recommend any new PC owner, before even turning on the computer, make sure all the cords are plugged in right. <laughs> it was so simple. My VGA light was on for such a simple reason. I didn't set up my monitors correctly. Because in a Mac, you just plug in your power supplies directly into the computer, like the back of the computer. It's all in one. It's an all-in-one computer. <laughs> Naturally, I was looking at the back of my new PC, seeing the same outputs, right? You got your HDMIs, your USB, your Ethernet cable, all of that. It exists. It's in the back of the PC. So what did I do? I, I plugged my HDMI ports into my motherboard, USB, um, HDMIs. All of that was going into my motherboard. That, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. If you have a graphics card that you paid a lot of money for, apparently in order to use that graphics card, you got to plug your monitors and stuff into it. I know. I know. <laughs> I, I do feel dumb. I'm not going to lie. I was standing there at Micro Center and he was showing me that the PC works really well. And I noticed that his monitor was plugged into a different output than an input than mine was. And I said, hey, dude, um, I see that you have the monitor plugged in to a different out, uh, input than I was using. What's that about? And he goes, where did you plug it in? <laughs> And I was like, I plugged it in here. And he goes, so you haven't even been using your graphics card? And I was like, I guess not. But that wasn't completely true. If you look at the task manager, the graphics card still kicks in when you're operating bigger projects. So when I use Adobe, you know, Premiere, when I'm using my even Fortnite kind of stuff, like bigger epic games, you know, bigger games, um, it actually does, it kicks on your graphics card to run those things. But if you have a 4K monitor, a 2K monitor, something like that, and you, you should be using your graphics card. So make sure that you plug in your bigger monitors to your graphics card. Um, that's going to give you that maximum amount of performance. So that's what I did wrong. And as soon as I I switched my HDMI port from the um, from the HDMI that is native into the motherboard and I moved that to the graphics card, it all fixed the issue. My VGA light automatically went off. No one had to mess with anything. So uh, that would be the second recommendation, right? For any new PC owner, just make sure that you are hooking up all of the peripherals the way that they're supposed to be. So those were the user error, right? The two things that I messed up on was my own was power supply management. And then the second one was hooking up all of the things um, properly into the PC unit, right? So um, now for the Enigma. Oh my God, talk about bad luck. Yikes. Um, okay, now for the stuff that was not my fault. <laughs> Because there was a lot of things that does that. it wasn't my fault. And apparently Micro Center and my friends who are experienced PC owners all said, you have the worst luck, which is unfortunate because this is my first PC. So having the worst luck and experiencing all of the hiccups early on isn't ideal for someone who doesn't know how to deal with it. So um, shout out to Nick. You know who you are. Help me out through a lot of this one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. But ultimately, it was my RAM. Uh, the RAM has not ever worked, which is, it never worked well. And remember, I had G Skills Neo. Um, supposedly, it was a really good RAM, highly recommended, very expensive, okay? Um, but ultimately, I went, the first RAM I got out of the box, I noticed that it was loose. Again, out of the box, I set up my computer, I turn it on. I'm already noticing that my RAM sticks are not equal. So if you take a look at my RAM, you can see out of the gate that it's not lined up. Now, I didn't seat the RAM initially. Remember, I paid some a professional at Micro Center to build a computer for me. So if the RAM was in fact seated incorrectly or broken in process, it wouldn't have been my error. I did get the warranty. I went back to Micro Center to show them what was going on. Uh, they said, yeah, that's not supposed to be happening. And I'm like, no, no, duh. The RAM itself actually worked. The RAM was fixed into the motherboard, all 32 gigs working. It was the actual product itself that just seemed a bit cheap, a bit loose and wiggly. And I was right. Um, the whole thing fell out. So we have the heat sink and the spacer. They all fell out. Let's fix it. So they replaced my RAM. Very nice. Very easy, smooth sailing. Always get the warranty, dude. I know it's expensive, but especially if you're a new PC owner, you know, it's worth it. Um, so I got my RAM. Micro Center said, this is an enigma. Super bad luck. Here you go. Here's some new RAM. Take it home and get her done. 
So I did. I took my RAM home. I watched the necessary YouTube videos and I fixed my RAM. Again, at no point did the RAM not work. It, it was the spacer and the heat sink that had fallen off due to bad adhesion. Not my fault. It's definitely a manufacturer error. So, um, second RAM. I got my second RAM. I'm super stoked. It was free, new. Let's go. I put it in. Uh, opened up my task manager after firing everything back up, and it's working. All 32 gigs. So I successfully replaced my RAM for the first time as a PC owner. Uh, I was super thrilled. The next day, I go to my computer. Man, it it's it's falling again. It it looks like it has fallen out again. Not as severely this time. Still unsure what's happening, so I obviously went back inside of my computer to see what was going on. I refixed it. It's still loose, the spacer um, that is holding the heat sink uh, with adhesive to the actual RAM stick. Um, it was not sticky. It's just not sticky. I don't know what's going on. It wasn't sticking. So I closed up my computer after I tried to like reseat it again. A few days later, I'm noticing it's falling out again. And, and then the next day, it's even worse. The third day, it's even worse. And I'm like, what is going on with this RAM, man? I had to take it back. I took it back. I took the second RAM back, the second G Skills Neo back to the store micro center shout out to micro center uh super dope easy transactions with the warranty the exchanges all of that was very smooth however g skills never doing that again never buying the g skills neo not happening um i ended up getting um corsair i got the corsair pro sl and um i had no issue out of the box it felt solid um so the Corsair's RAM, same speeds, same capacity, much more of a solid piece. Um, so that's just the biggest update. I am no longer using G Skills Neo RAM, but instead I switched to Corsair. I'm still very curious to see if anyone else has had these issues with that RAM. Um, I, I scoured through the forums and it seemed like there was a few instances in which other people experienced this as well with other brands as well. So it, it doesn't seem to be exclusive to the G skills manufacturing. Again, I'm a new PC owner. So if you guys have any information about RAM and why the spacer and the heatsink had fallen off twice, I, I would really love to know about it. And, uh, and if it happens again, maybe we can get some, uh, conversations flowing in the, in the comments to see if we could help some other people out. Cause again, there were some forums that it didn't seem like many people were helping others and I, I didn't know where to look. So that's why I'm making this video. I'm, I'm hoping that it, this video will help other people try to figure out and troubleshoot some of these hiccups that seem to happen early on, uh, from new PC owners. So from one, you know, new PC owner to maybe, maybe another, maybe you're an experienced person. Uh, just make sure that your power supply management, uh, it's good and secure where your PC power supply unit has its own source. Uh, and then your maybe peripherals are sharing, um, you know, that, that, uh, that other one. Okay. So, so do that. Make sure that you're utilizing the best performance you can out of your graphics card. If you got a dual monitor setup, you might want to consider that. And also the enigma that is G Skills adhesion. <laughs> what is going on with that? Um, so one month of owning a PC, and I've had a lot of problems. Um, I'm glad I'm learning a lot about the PC. I'm definitely developing skills that I never thought I'd, I'd have. That's that's what went on. That's a little update on my my PC build. Anyway, um, it's been about a month since I posted the initial video where I explained my original setup, my original configuration, and all of that. So you can go check that out here. Probably it'll be here. Here. You can check out the video here. <laughs> Um, and in this video, I will be, I, I, I explain transparently the breakdown, the pricing, the configuration, and everything in between. So go check it out. And if you like this super quick and fast video, you know what to do. You can check out that video. Or that video. Or you could like, subscribe in the comments. To see more content from me. V.